Okay, so this is it, the moment of truth. Filming for posterity here. So, um, today is April 12, 2004, and we're going to see how far we get with the first bring up. So, this is the first time that uh, the machine has been run with all the parts in place, and we're going to run a, we're going to try to run a Fibonacci function to compute the Fibonacci function of 10, which should be uh, 55 decimal and 37 hex. So let me put this pencil here. So parts of the machine is powered on, but I've got the clock stopped, and we're going to we have a switch here that lets us select from different clocks. We can single step the clock. We can have a variable clock here with a 555 timer base. Then I've got two oscillators, a 1 megahertz and a 4 megahertz oscillator. So we'll start off with the single step clock. This display here is a register display. So when the clock is stopped, you can turn this switch and look at different register values. So right now they've got garbage because we just haven't started yet. But we're going to start off looking at the memory address register which is effectively the PC, so that will be interesting right off the bat. Uh, this display here is going to show the contents of the address re of the instruction register, so as we fetch instructions they should show up here. The display along the top is here is going to show us the address of the next micro instruction that we're going to execute, uh, which should be interesting. And so the way the Fibonacci function works, I've got a listing here, we're going to start off by setting up the stack pointer. So we'll first uh, load an immediate hex 7000 into A, copy that into the stack pointer, call main. And uh, at the main, we're going to set up a stack frame, uh, load 10 into uh, register A, uh, save it in the stack as a parameter, and then uh, call the Fibonacci function, which will recursively, uh, I hope, compute Fibonacci. So, let's give it a shot. So, I'm going to turn from stop to run, and we'll see a light here. The clock light will show the, the state of the clock, and I'm going to have to toggle a few times to get it to start up. So let's toggle, okay, now we've got a high clock, low clock, and now we should start seeing instructions. Excellent. So the first opcode is a 7C, which we've latched it in, and that goes to microcode address 7C. So let's take a few more steps. Oh, and excellent, our, our memory address register incremented. And um, let me go ahead and step again. We're going now to microcode instruction 67, so this should be the sequence that loads a 7 thousand hex into A. Okay, so now we're uh, address three. Okay, excellent. So, what we've got now is the next instruction is CB, which is supposed to copy A into the stack pointer. But let's go ahead and stop the clock and take a look at the A register. So, if we're really lucky, Right now, if I switch this, we should see 7,000, but we don't. Darn. Okay, so something didn't work there. All right, well, let's go ahead and continue anyway. Uh, let me go ahead and turn it back to the memory address register. So we're at four. CB, I should have copied it, and now we're at uh, instruction 80, which is a call instruction. So here's where we're going to try to call the main program. So this will be the first branch we've attempted. Uh, so we'll see if a branch works. And so we'll do this one. Branches take a ways to go. And <coughs> just trying to stir. And we're now at address 7, which 8, which we should not be. Okay, so we have failed. Uh, we did not take the branch. 
And if I just turn this on to variable clock here, we've, we've missed taking the branch, and so we've fallen into a halt. So that was our first attempt. It didn't work, but we'll try to debug this. Thing.